clarifying a few things about the previous video. The Australia Chile flight happens in this plane and it is through the Pacific Ocean. What was explained in the last video is that all the maps have errors and are inaccurate. For wanting to adapt a plane to an imaginary sphere and then in turn wanting to transform it into different projections that distort reality. That is why we cannot trust the equidistant as a muffle projection either, it does not accurately represent, the reality, the size, or the proportions of the world where we live. Since it is impossible to take a real complete picture of our entire world from above, that is why there is no complete image of the Earth and it is the reason why we do not know the size or the real shape of the plane where we live. Children in all parts of the world can observe that the Earth does not move, that the Sun, the Moon and the stars are those that revolve around us, because it's what your intuition, common sense, and empirical evidence show. But at school the books show us something very different, an unquestionable truth already established and poor for anyone who wants to question it. The experiments that have been carried out to detect the movement of the Earth have not been able to locate such movement or distinguish it from the relative opposite movement of the universe. Many attempts have been made to prove and show that heliocentrism is true and geocentrism is false. All these attempts have failed. And they have only reinforced geocentrism. The best known of these is the Mitchelson-Morley experiment, which attempted to measure the change in the speed of light due to the assumed motion of the Earth through space. They were measured in different directions at various locations on the Earth's surface and could not detect any significant changes. The Mitchelson-Gale experiment was also unable to demonstrate the heliocentric model, but was able to measure the motion of the ether firmament around the Earth with an accuracy of 2%. People should be aware that there are a variety of models that could explain the observations. For example, I can build you a spherically symmetric universe with the Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it from a philosophical point of view, from my point of view, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. What I want to highlight is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria to choose our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide it. Cosmologist George Ellis, think globally, act universally. To save the heliocentric theory from the conclusive geocentric experiments conducted by Mitchelson, Morley, Gale, Sagnac, Cantor, and others, Albert Einstein created his theory of special relativity, which in a philosophical act banished the absolute ether firmament from scientific study, and he replaced it with a form of relativism that allowed heliocentrism and geocentrism to have equal merit. If there is no universal etheric medium in which all things exist, then philosophically, a complete relativism can be postulated with respect to the motion of two objects, such as the Earth and the Sun. Today, like the theory of heliocentrism, Einstein's theory of relativity is accepted around the world as absolute truth even though he himself admitted that geocentrism is equally justifiable. The struggle, so violent in the early days of science, between the views of Ptolemy and Copernicus would make no sense. Any coordinate system can be used with equal justification. The two phrases, the sun is static and the earth is moving, or the sun is moving and the earth is at rest, would simply mean two different conventions regarding two different coordinate systems. Albert Einstein we know that the difference between a heliocentric theory and a geocentric theory is only a relative motion, and that such a difference has no physical meaning. Cosmologist Fred Hoyle If one accepts the non-intuitive, but highly imaginative, heliocentric model, although it goes against observation, experimental evidence, and common sense, then accept that the Earth is a sphere that is rotating on an imaginary axis at a speed of 1,600 km per hour, 
which in turn travels around the Sun at a speed of approximately 29 kilometers per second. The Sun in turn travels around the nucleus of a galaxy at a speed of 792,000 kilometers per hour. The Milky Way is traveling over a universe that is expanding at a speed of 71 kilometers per second for each megaparsec of distance. If we are subjected to all these forces and movements, why has no one in all of history ever felt them? Most people answer, although they cannot explain how, that this is because the Earth's atmosphere supposedly rotates precisely along with the Earth. But if that's the case, dogmatic heliocentrists run into a host of problems. For example, if both the Earth and its atmosphere rotate at 1,600 km per hour from west to east, why don't pilots need 1,000 km height compensating acceleration when flying? From east to west? If the 1,600 km per hour atmosphere is constantly flowing east, why don't pilots heading north-south have to set diagonal courses to compensate? If the 1,600 km per hour atmosphere is constantly flowing eastward, how do you explain the casual but unpredictable movement of the clouds, wind patterns and weather formations in all directions? If the atmosphere is constantly creeping along with the Earth's rotation, why can I feel the slightest breeze to the west but not the 1,600 km per hour from the Earth turning to the east? By withdrawing the Earth from the immobile center of the universe, these philosophers, Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, Galileo, Einstein, have physically and metaphysically moved us from a place of supreme importance to one of complete indifference and insignificance. If the Earth is the center of the universe, then the ideas of God, creation and the purpose of human existence are resplendent. But if Earth is just one of the billions of planets that orbit billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for Earth and human existence are they become highly implausible. The heliocentric theory by putting the sun at the center of the universe made man appear to be just one of the possible pilgrims roaming a cold sky. It seemed less likely that he was born to live gloriously and to reach paradise after his death. Less likely, too, that he was the object of God's care. Morris Klein By removing Earth from the immobile center of the universe, the entirety of astrology, a science of consciousness coveted and used obsessively by the elite, becomes null and void. If the Earth is the center of the universe and all the planets, ancient gods, revolve around us, then the astrology charts, alignments and astrology are measurable, calculable and repeatable. Therefore scientifically verifiable. But if Earth is just one of the billions of planets that revolve around billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then astrology disappears into the realms of pseudoscience that make us believe that our ancestors were ignorant. All the supposed evolution of the universe, the Earth and humanity, that is, all modern evolutionary-based cosmology that controls knowledge. Today all that is completely undone if the stars do what the cameras show they are doing. That is, they go around the Earth every night. We live in a yin-yang world of duality where everything and its opposite exist together in proportions. Perfect as male-female. Good-bad. Hot-cold. Knowledge-ignorance. Inhalation-exhalation. Dark-light. Day-night and of course sun and moon. Half of our lives, the day, are ruled by the sun and the other half of our lives, the night, are ruled by the moon. But we have been led to believe that the Earth and all the planets revolve around the Sun. That the Sun is much bigger and more distant, the Moon is much smaller and closer. And that is simply our perspective here on Earth, a coincidence that makes them the same size. Although we now know that there is much evidence to show that the heliocentric model, it has many weaknesses, it is very difficult to make people see it so that they stop for a moment, question and reflect on everything they have learned. 
not everything has already been investigated, not everything is established, nor has everything been discovered. The important thing here is to invite reflection, research and corroboration.